The first woodworking commission that I've taken in many years was to design a trophy around this antique bowl. This is the story of that project, which ends in a very tragic outcome and a subsequent change in plans. The following is how I introduced this project in my shop update for December of 2019. I have a trophy that I need to make for our Basset Hound Club. Part of what I have here is a, actually a zebra wood bull blank and this is going to be turned to sit on top of the trophy and there'll be a bowl that sits on top of hit this and there'll be a little recess in the top of it for the base of the bowl to sit so it doesn't get knocked off the trophy. Then actually what I'm going to do with the trophy is I'm going to make the top that's removable so that the bowl can be picked up, put inside the trophy and then the top put back on for when it's transported or stored. So that's a project that's coming up. It'll be made from zebra wood. Here's a board of zebra wood I had hanging around in my shop that I'm going to be using for that. And the other wood, the main wood, will be walnut. The story starts in April of 2014. Our friend Mary, who commissioned the trophy, came to our house to see a litter of Basset Hound puppies that we had recently had. Mary had no idea that this puppy she's holding so dear that we called Gingham was soon to be her pixie. Mary and her husband Ron were among the very first people that we ever met at a Basset Hound show. Mary commissioned this trophy to honor her mother and the fact that she and her mother had been breeding Bassets for 50 years. The bowl for the trophy was won in 1970 by the dog that Mary and her mother used to start their line of Basset Hounds. That was the year that they started breeding. So in 2020, when the trophy was supposed to be presented, it meant that it was the 50th anniversary of their breeding of Bassets. And as we all know, 2020 was the year that COVID-19 took over the world. So the show that was scheduled for March of that year was canceled and the trophy was not presented. Ron and Mary had been very excited to see our puppies because they'd been trying to breed and hadn't had any success. So it was great for them. They really both enjoyed puppies. So they loved coming to our house and seeing our puppies. The litter of puppies continued to grow. We took them to visit some friends and Ron and Mary were there as well. We asked Ron and Mary if they might be interested in one of the girls. As soon as I said that, Mary quickly got out of her chair and went over and looked at the puppies very closely. It was the first time that she'd really looked at them closely since they'd grown up. The puppies continued to grow and develop. Since Ron and Mary lived two to three hours away from us. We arranged to meet them several times during that time. Sometimes we met them at our friend's house again, or we arranged to meet them at a park that was halfway between their house and our house. But Mary and Ron really enjoyed watching the puppies grow and develop. With Mary's background as a breeder for so many years, it was great to get her opinion of the puppies, and she was very excited about what she was seeing in all of them, especially the two girls, because she wanted a girl. Mary wanted a girl because if the girls turned out to be as good as she thought they would be, she could use that girl to restart her breeding program. We had used a pedigree that was very compatible with the pedigree that Mary had already started, so a girl would fit into her program very well. As a longtime breeder, Mary knew how important it was to breed dogs from the right pedigrees to each other. Pedigrees are extremely important in purebred dogs. The day finally arrived for Mary and Ron to visit our house and decide on which puppy they wanted and which one we would keep. We called the girls Gingham and Lace. The first one here is Gingham and the second one is Lace. At the end of the day, we decided that Mary would go home with Gingham and we would keep Lace for our own. When Mary got home, she introduced Pixie to the rest of her Basset Hounds and they were very excited to see her. 
Pixie really flourished under Ron and Mary's care. She was a very active girl and loved being outside, so she spent a lot of time out in their yard. Mary spent a lot of time training Pixie for the dog shows. The Basset Hound Club of America had their national show in Sacramento, California. Pixie was there with Mary and they won Best of Opposite Sex in the Puppy Sweepstakes, which is a great honor, especially at the national level. Over the next few months, Pixie appeared in several different dog shows. She did very well with Mary. Mary's great at training Bassets to show. At the Greater San Diego Basset Hound Club, Pixie was selected best of all the class girls and she also was best of winners. The next month after that show, Pixie finished her AKC championship. She was selected best of all the class girls and also best of opposite sex to best of breed for that show. Fairly soon after that, Pixie's sister Star that we kept for our house became an AKC champion as well. As the girls grew older, Ron and Mary were considering breeding Pixie, and we lost Star at age two to cancer. That left Pixie as the only girl from this litter. Pixie had a litter of three. Mary and Ron had decided on gum for a theme for the litter, so the girl became Chicklets, and the boys became Bazooka and Double Bubble. As time went on, Mary and Ron decided to keep the two boys, and Chicklets became our little girl. At first, of course, all three of them lived with Ron and Mary at their home, and Pixie was a wonderful mother. She really knew how to take care of the puppies very well. Since we lived so far from Ron and Mary, it was very difficult for us to keep up with the litter, but Mary did send us updates every once in a while, like the one here. She also sent us individual photos of the puppies. This is Double Bubble, which will become Dubby later on, and he's going to be very important to the end of this video. This next photo is probably one of my favorite of the whole litter. They're all sitting out on their backyard grass. This photo was taken about the time that Pam and I were able to make our first trip up to see the puppies. I was having problems with my heart, and so we weren't able to travel up there very often. As those of you who have had puppies know, puppies grow very fast. Here's a photo of the puppies soon before we were able to visit them for the second time. We ended up meeting Ron and Mary at our friend's house that was about halfway between our two homes. Pam and I are shown here with Chicklets because it had been decided that Chicklets would be our little girl. We're skipping ahead with the photos here and this is one of Double Bubble or Dubby getting best of breed over several champions. Soon after that, a special event took place that relates to this trophy. Dubby, or Double Bubble, was winner's dog at the Basset Hound Club of Southern California show. And that meant that Ron and Mary retired the trophy. In order to retire the trophy, Ron and Mary had had three boys that got winner's dog at these shows over the years. When someone retires a trophy, they can either re-donate it to the club or they can make a new one. Since Pam and I were co-owners on Dubby and I'd made some trophies for the club in the past, I volunteered to make a trophy. Mary loved the idea and she wanted to dedicate the trophy to her mother. I worked on the trophy and Mary came down to our house for a dog show. This is her with Dubby, it was raining outside, so they came in well protected from the rain. That morning, she showed Dubby. He's shown here doing what we call a down and back so that the judge can see him moving from the rear and from the front. At each show, one class male and one class female earn what is called winners. Each of the winners earns some points 
towards their AKC championship. Once they become champions, the dogs can continue to compete in best of breed competition and earn points towards a grand championship. Once we got to our house after the show, I showed Mary the progress that I'd made on the trophy. She showed me this plaque that she'd have made up to put on the front of the trophy in honor of her mother. We also went over some details of the trophy. One of the details we talked about was how the zebra wood trim was going to be attached to the top and the base. We also discussed the finish. Mary decided that she wanted a gloss lacquer finish for the trophy. She thought that looked best. The next morning, we had another dog show at the same place. Here Mary is showing Lexi. Since Lexi was already a champion, she's competing here in best of breed competition. She's working towards points for her grand championship. For those of you that are not familiar with dog shows, it's not a beauty contest as some people think. The dogs are judged by an AKC licensed judge based on the standard. It's a written standard that each breed has. The judge spends time going over each dog and feeling the muscles and bone structure of the dogs and seeing how they stand on this ramp. Whenever possible, we had Mary show Lexi because of her experience in the show ring and the fact that Lexi really responded to Mary very well. Mary really enjoyed showing Lexi. Once a judge examines each dog on the ramp, they want to see how they move. Here's the down and back like we saw with Debbie earlier. The judge is looking to see if the movement of the dog matches what they felt on the ramp as they were going over the dog. After the down and back, this judge has asked Mary to take Lexi around so that he can see her movement from the side. Again, the judge is matching Lexi against the standard for Basset Hounds. After the judge went over each individual dog and watched them move independently, he watched the whole best of breed class move together. Then each exhibitor got down and stacked their dog, put their dog in a show pose so that the judge could make his final decisions. Out of all those dogs in the ring, Lexi was selected best of opposite sex to best of breed. We had no idea at the time, but this was Mary's very last dog show. After the dog show, a group of us had lunch at one of our favorite local restaurants that was near where the dog show was being held. When we were finished with lunch, Mary packed up her van and headed home. Once she was home, Mary texted us so we knew she was home safely. Fairly early the next day, we heard from Mary. She sent us a text from her hospital bed. Early that morning, Mary had been awakened by a seizure, so she called the paramedics. The next few months were very difficult for Mary and Ron. She underwent a lot of different tests and saw many different doctors. All the doctors seemed to be confused about what was happening to Mary, but the signs kept leading to a brain tumor. Eventually, that's what they decided on, and they did an operation to do some exploratory work. During all this turmoil, Ron and Mary lost Dubby to bloat. It wasn't long after that that we lost Mary. Because of the pandemic, it wasn't easy to go visit Ron, but some friends of ours and Pam and I decided to go up and visit him anyway. We went up and saw him and talked to him quite a bit. One of the things that we discussed was changing the trophy to being dedicated to Mary instead of Mary's mother. Later on, Ron decided that was a good idea. So the plaque that Mary had made to dedicate the trophy to her mother was going to be replaced with one that would dedicate the trophy to Mary. When we were visiting with Ron, he shared with us this beautiful photo that was taken by a friend, Maria Bivens. And we decided to ask Maria if it was possible to use this photo on the plaque for the trophy. And Maria agreed. 
Shown here are the different views of the trophy. This is the trophy as it would be presented with the bowl on top. Then the bowl can come off of the trophy and the top can be taken off. This reveals the inside of the trophy where we have some batting under some purple velvet cloth. I use purple because that's the color of the ribbon that is won by Winner's Dog at the show. As shown here, the bowl nestles in the batting and cloth inside the trophy. Then the top can be replaced back on top of the trophy and it has some pads on the bottom that hold the bowl securely inside. Our friend Maria who took the photograph also works for a company that makes plaques like this for trophies. So she had this one made for us. I tried my best to match exactly the same fonts that Mary used and the same wording that she used on the trophy and Ron agreed to that. Trophies for shows have to be transported to and from the show and may have to be stored for a year until the next show if the person who wins them doesn't take them home. We bought this storage bin and I cut out some foam to keep the bottom and the top of the trophy from moving around inside the container. On top of the foam insert that holds the trophy in the container, I included some care instruction in case the winner of the trophy decides to take it home for the year. Finally, after more than a year's delay, the trophy was ready on the trophy table to be awarded to the winner of Winner's Dog. It looked great, sitting right next to a couple of other trophies that Pam and I have donated to the club. This is the official win photo of Winner's Dog.